He was a master meter in Mosscrest, and a successful small shop that specialized in apple mead. He remembers the day when the messenger from the Emperor's General came to visit the Castellan. No one knows what was said, but it was obvious that there was no surrender of the city. Sir Roderick the Castellan was an honorable, loyal man of House Marland. He was a landed knight tasked with protecting the city. Normally it was from goblin raiders, but that day, the Colovian Empire has reached Moss Crest. Nim was a young elf, at least an elven standard, a couple hundred years old at the time of the invasion. While most people fled to the keep for safety, Nim and a few of his friends ran to the Evermoss wood for shelter. They hid in one of the many caves that dotted the hillside. These caves were old mines and quarries that built Moss Crest. From them, they watched the sky glow red that night. They knew Moss Crest had fallen, not wanting to be subject to the rule of the Colovians. In those caves, they built their shelters and stayed. Nim is now a much older elf, a couple hundred years older in fact. His friends have either died or have moved back into their surrounding town. But Nim, he stayed. One day, while out foraging, he heard wagons on the road. Lots of wagons. He ran to the top of the hill for a vantage point. Peering out from behind a tree, he saw a caravan. Not a military caravan. They looked like a settler's caravan. The caravan was making its way deeper into Evermoss wood. Deciding to follow from a distance, Nim lurked from the safety of the trees. And when the caravan stopped to rest for the night, he saw his old friend, Alyssa, an elven farmer that he knew back when he lived in Moss Crest. Still trying to lurk, Nim became a little careless, and as soon as Alyssa saw him, she shouted and waved her arms for him to approach. Nim asked where the caravan was heading. With excitement and hope in her eyes, Alyssa explained everything that Brother Dorn had preached in Blacklight, and explained that they were following the blacksmith to Runestone Hill, where he was the leader of the caravan. Curious, Nim asked for any news and events happening around the world. Excitedly, Alyssa explained that peace had returned back to the land and that House Merlon had bent the knee to the Empire and was able to keep the land and it was slowly returning to what it looked like back before the war. After a few hours of talking and catching up, Nim returned to his cave to pack his bag for he too was to travel to Rootstone Hill. He had been alone for far too long.
Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the time lapse of the metery and the surrounding area of it. A little longer than the previous video, I have learned a few things using uh, the new updated version of the Conquest mod and uh, and the Forge Launcher, the Curse Forge Launcher. When doing time lapses, if you update a mod, you're going to lose that time lapse, so you won't be able to go in and render it, which is what happened with these buildings here. I did add them in for the time lapse recording, but then I updated a mod, I'm not sure which one, and um, I lost that recording, so unfortunately that was not included. But you got to see me build up the uh, surrounding terrain around it. Um, looking at a lot of older maps and playing these Team Come Deliverance, I noticed a lot of like triangles and roads and paths where people would walk and stuff and it's obviously where most people would be because uh, most people wouldn't come up this way and walk around here they just follow the one path and so there would be many different ones some smaller and then some bigger so I just thought I'd try and include that too for immersion another thing that I did include for immersion too is called dynamic surroundings that adds a few different things to it if you get up to a proper height your character is going to start breathing uh, cold air as you can see on the screen uh, cold breath and even in some climates like snow and stuff and there's other small details sound and stuff in certain biomes there's little water droplets and many minor changes. Water droplets on um, waterfalls, ones that, I sh that I'll show you that I built in the time lapse. So, coming up here, we're coming up to the metery area. We do have two more small guest cottages of the monastery where people can stay. The two individuals here who are either traveling together or separate and don't mind sharing. And for either one person in here or a couple or family or whatever, um, I know they'd sh in medieval times they'd share like one bed because that's all that they would have. Like the rooms that they had in their houses and stuff weren't as big as we have now and they weren't as fun. It's just look at our, how accurate Kingdom Come Deliverance is on it. One other thing I wanted to say that I'm taking a lot of inspiration from different games. Kingdom Come Deliverance, uh, Anno 1404, Medieval Dynasty. These buildings that you see that I built in wood is inspired by Medieval Dynasty. This is more based after their like a storage house, but I decided to turn it into the Meadery's tasting bar, or in bar where they will sell their bottled mead to travelers, or even if people just wanted to, while staying, come up and just buy a drink to have and enjoy over in this little picnic area at night or something, or whatever, something like that. I just thought it'd be cool to include this in here. And this building here is based after the brewery or meadery in Anno 1404. I will show a picture of it right now on screen. So being inspired by it, I decided to like do a little bit of creativity with it. It doesn't show the interiors of the game, so I made the interiors myself. But I added in this part here as the gate to get into the back of the meadery where the head me meter uh, lives and stuff. He's not a monk. The monks do work in the meadery but as like assistants, but they have someone special who knows what they're doing to craft mead live here. And so he lives back in that house there. But first we'll go into the metery itself and another mod that I'm showcasing that I found out from one of Filthy Coins videos is the create mod. You can move, uh, make Minecraft blocks movable whether on a windmill or a water wheel 
here I just did a little simple pulley system as I'm just trying to figure it out. I would like to use it in the future for caves and quarries and stuff for like bundles of rocks or whatever. That um that's coming up. And so if you pull up here as you can see the uh, thing is moving. And that, I just think that's pretty cool. So, just trying to get used to the mod itself and trying to figure out how to use it. I have watched some tutorials in it, but it's just a little confusing. I'm a little slow at learning that. So, making meadery, when making mead, when looking it up, mead has been around for a millennia, really. Since even probably before, like, Viking era. Uh, it's made from fermented honey and basically warm water. That's really it. It's uh, unlike beer where they brew it in copper um, bin. They would um, like copper pots, like gigantic copper cauldrons. They would boil the water first and then let the water cool down because you don't want the um, water to be too hot. So, once it's cooled down, then you'd add the honey, uh, which is then from the honey, from adding in the honey, you drop everything in here and let it sit and ferment and let the alcohol build from it because it comes from a natural alcohol from the honey. And once it's uh, ready, then you tap it and uh, serve it. And it doesn't take that long to do it, but in here they're going to be doing it in big batches. Unfortunately, using half slabs and stuff, you can't really put on a cap, which I would have liked. Maybe there is a mod out there that does allow to put on levers or hooks on a half slab. Maybe I'll look for one and add those in. And then I'll show you in a future video. But yeah, I just wanted to explain how mead would be made and stuff. I do have to add in some NPCs here and maybe even a quest line here like going to go get like certain ingredients to try out like a new mead. But one would be for plain honey mead which is the original type and then they'd infuse like mead with other flavors like raspberries and natural fruit they'd find around as you saw in the time lapse, I built an apple orchard, so the other flavor would be apple mead. So one for the other one. And then up here they have their storage area, which they could use this lever to bring the uh, barrels up and store them right over here. Then when they're ready to take them down, the pulley drops it right back down. So I thought it was pretty cool just having like a small storage area that's ready to go then maybe me that they want to have sit out longer and ferment even longer than in the um, kilns basically um, sit up here until they're ready to go. So we're going to head out. Oh, one other thing I forgot to show you. The office. I did include this. Um, and here is the... Uh, Head meter's office. He works in here, does the orders, figure out how much needs to be made, how much in taxes they need to send off to the king, and um, really it's just more of a small, comfortable office, but not really much to it as there wouldn't be that big of a space that's needed. Just um, needed to room to do their paperwork and stuff and hold their documents. What I think is cool about this chest is that it opens. It is part of the Reforged mod, Complex Reforged mod, but it does open. I just wish we could store things in there. That would make it even more awesome. So coming out here, out to the back, in the time lapse, you saw me making the uh, apiary where the beehives are, where the bees live where they go and pollinate over in these flowers here and then they bring back their nectar and do their thing whatever bees do to make honey 
And there's a fast access into this area of the uh, gardens and stuff. It is uh, gated off to be locked up at night or whenever they don't want someone in there, but it's more just a quick access from one area to the other for the gardeners and stuff. And this is access for the uh, for the horses and stuff as you saw in the time lapse. Uh, the head meter, since he's not really part of the monastery, he can go eat at the dining hall, but if he chooses he could eat back here, then you see that um, they have a little pot of stew, of stew going over the campfire, so I thought that was pretty cool, sitting out back here, eat their meal in peace with the nature, try not to get stung, maybe. But up here we have the uh, house where the uh, where they live, where the family lives. It's small and quaint. Really, all that's needed. Now, uh, this is actually a medieval painting of a farm. Uh, it is able to be used because of copyright right laws, and it is in Creative Commons. Uh, copyright laws only cover for like 50 years, 100 years after the artist dies. And if this was made back in medieval times, it didn't exist back then. So it's open source, really. So what I did was I used that um, Mapcraft uh, website that I put in the link in the last video. And basically turned this into a one-by-one -one, uh, map painting here. So I just thought that'd be a pretty cool addition on here. I do like to paint my own using uh, art my, on my computer, my software, but I just, doing this episode, I just didn't have a lot of time to do that and I just wanted to add in something a little different. The scale on it though, if you notice, this tree is tiny compared to these people and a lot of times in medieval paintings the people are huge and the buildings back there and stuff are really small. So I just think that's funny. It's just the scale and everything perspective was very different back then. They were more focusing on the farming and what they were doing than more of the background but they added it in just for I guess the ambience or something. So over here we do have a horse. Let me know what you'd like to name him in the comments below. I would like to put a name tag on him. This is the uh, head meter's horse when he's ready to go to town to bring the mead to the taverns. You will saddle up this horse with a cart that's down there, then bring the cart and horse up to the front door of the meadery, and off they go to town. And then here is the area where they keep the hay for the horse for the feed and stuff, which I think is pretty cool. And this one too is based after medieval dynasty, this building here. I really do like the thought of like this type of building here. Just, it just seems more rustic and more medievalish to me. And I did another small uh, storage area for the apple orchard where once they're done picking up the apples and stuff and maybe they're still picking up more, they could place it here so they get the cart up to load up the cart and bring to their stores. And right behind us we do have the apple orchard. I did only add in four trees. Uh, I think that's all that's really neat. It's not really a thing that they sell too much. Sure, they might sell some apples, but it's used mainly for the mead, and they may not need that many. And it looks like the leaves are bountiful with the apples and stuff. There's plenty of them. I did add in, besides apple leaves, the, um, what is it? The dark beech tree leaves. Only because what I wanted to do was make it look like some of the apples have been picked from some of the leaves as you see with the apple uh, baskets on the ground. I wanted to make it look like they'd be picked. If they were on the ground here, 
then like all the tea leaves wouldn't have them and they would be uh, some would be here so maybe the worker here picks the apples from here and placed them here and then they're moving them over here so yeah just trying to add in a little bit of more different thought of when I'm building like Okay, yeah, we do have the apple leaves, and I could build the tree with all the apples, but then having apples in a basket and having all the leaves filled with apple leaves just didn't really seem right. It just seemed like it wouldn't work. Uh, let me know about ideas of what could be back here, because it's a big empty spot. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, so I just added a small meadow. Um, I could add another tree in here. Or maybe a way up into this area, like maybe a small footpath or something. Or maybe even like a, uh, not, not a monument, a shrine or something to like Andraste or maybe one of the minor gods that work with Andraste. And here is another feature of the um, Dynamic Surroundings mod, the a waterfall here. And... It also adds these little droplets as the water hits the rock and stuff below. Like it's bouncing off and stuff that you'd actually would see. So yeah guys, that's pretty much this episode. Just really wanted to show off the metery. It did take a little longer than what I'd like. Um, but I didn't want to just build this building and that and have a whole bunch of empty area. I just really wanted to tell the story of the metery and show everything about it. So, with that being said, please leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't, so then you can stay up to date with my content, and leave a comment below of what you'd like to see next if you'd like to go into the monastery or even so often do some of the village surrounding the monastery, maybe take a break from this and go to the village or maybe even the cave system that they found the uh, runestone in, and Andraste runestone. So let me know below what you'd like to see next and until the next one, bye.